Hello world. Welcome to my first video on this channel, uh, The Casual Cube. Uh, the purpose of this channel is just to kind of document my experience as a first time uh, Magic the Gathering player. Now, I've, I have experience with other uh, trading card games, but I never actually dived into Magic the Gathering. And this right here is an Explorers of Ixalan board game. Uh, I think it includes four different decks, has the tiles, some counters, uh, some deck boxes. But the reason why I picked this product is because, first of all, it was on sale. It wasn't at the MSRP of $65. I got it for, I think, 40 And to me, that was a good price because uh, I have a bunch of friends who also haven't played Magic the Gathering. Uh, but, you know, we all kind of have exposures to various trading card games, so we know more or less kind of, you know, how to play trading card games like Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Hearthstone, and the like. So, but none of us really has ever played Magic. And we do have a board game night, and I wanted something different uh, from, like, all the games of Settlers of Catan that we play, or King of Tokyo, and... You know, we, we have a couple other games. We're just starting to get into Dungeons and Dragons too, but that's besides the point. Um, I thought this product would be a great introduction to Magic the Gathering for all of us, because none of us really have any cards. This is my first set of Magic the Gathering cards. And like I said, um, I do have exposure to other trading card games. Back in the day when I was in grade school and middle school, you know, I played Pokemon, I played Yu-Gi-Oh!, and I've always been exposed to magic, uh, going to various comic uh, stores and, you know, even a Wizards of the Coast. I remember, you know, actually playing in various tournaments as a young kid for Pokemon. And I was always, always exposed to magic, it's just I never really dived in. And now, you know, May 2018, um, it's quite late, I know, but... I don't know, I think it'd just be fun. Um, not really going to get into competitive magic, just kind of want to be casual. Um, so this is this is it. I'm going to do a little unboxing. Um, I removed the addresses. But yeah, let's, let's kind of get into this. Let's see what's in here. And the reason why it's unfocused right now is because... I plan on showing the cards close up and... My uh, my camera doesn't actually autofocus in movie mode. It's an older Canon DSLR, but that's okay. Um, I have it focused right now to kind of a close-up view, um, so I can show the cards. I'll probably also put an overlay of the cards so you can see what they do. Um, wow, that's really cool. So, like I said, for 65 bucks, this is the MSRP for $65, I've done some product research, and that, that's another reason why this channel is called The Casual Cube. Um, I just want to be kind of a casual Magic player. I'm not really trying to get any competitive or anything, so obviously I don't really know any of the cards. This is my first ever Magic the Gathering cards. So, this is really cool, um, very beautiful box art, this is some kind of like condor or dinosaur thing, really interesting, like warrior on top, 13 plus 2 to 4 players, 30 minute games, so the cool thing is, um, that's kind of cool, a little dinosaur. Um, the cool thing is, is since we do play Settlers of Catan pretty often, uh, you know, the hexagon board tiles I thought was a perfect way for for me to introduce, uh, oops, my phone, uh, introduce my friends to play Magic the Gathering with me. Hold on, give me a second. Oh, okay, that's not that. Um, I thought it would be a perfect way to introduce my friends to kind of play the game with me. Um, because some of them, I guess, are a little bit hesitant to card games like Hearthstone. Um, and this is obviously more complex than Hearthstone, but I thought it would be a cool way to kind of, you know, sneak 
in the magic addiction, uh, you know, that we can all play together. And since it's a four player game, uh, we can all kind of get into it. We have, I don't know, about five players, um, excluding girlfriends, I guess. But, you know, I thought it'd be cool for them to play too. We can, like, rotate players in and out. Um, but yeah, let's check out what's in here. So, that's kind of cool. Um, it's a deck box art, I guess. Everything's really polished. Um, everything's all sealed. I guess these are the board tiles. Yeah, these are the board, board tiles. Really cool. So I did find that someone actually got misprints of these, where it was like, um, <laughs> all the cuts were like misaligned, so I'm pretty grateful that I don't have that. That would have sucked. But yeah. Oh wow. So these are all the cards. And it includes like this really kind of, I don't know, kind of shoddy plastic kind of flimsy, yeah, kind of flimsy, uh, I don't know if I'll be putting my cards in there, but, I don't know, we'll see. So, this is really cool. My first ever Magic the Gathering cards, look at that. Blood Crazed Paladin. And I guess this is another tribal deck. Adaptive Automaton. Whoa. Um, I guess these are kind of like what makes the game a little unique. Or these are tokens, never mind. Yeah, these are just tokens. Token artifacts. So, I never actually played a game of Magic. I'm um, going to have to learn online kind of like how to play. And I always thought that was kind of interesting. When I was doing pro product research on this, um, it actually doesn't include... That's actually really freaking cool. Look at that. It actually doesn't include um, how to play Magic, which I thought was interesting, so I'm going to have to just kind of learn with my friends. We'll look online. Uh, we'll go through these later. That's kind of boring. That's just the game. Um, let's go through the cards. So let's do it in the order that I saw. I think it was, yeah, I think it was like this. So, first up is... I think this is the black, black deck, it's like pirates or something? Vampires, yeah, vampires, okay. Let me put this away. Man, this is really cool. I just like <laughs> unpeeling decks of cards. It's always fun. Alright, throw that away. Okay. So, here we go. Blood Crazed Paladin. Alright, so it looks like... It looks like there's a lot of... Okay, here's two... Um, I think these are 60 card decks, if I'm not mistaken. And a lot of the times, yeah. So you do want, um, like, four of for a lot of cards, just so you can be consistent with your strategy. Um, so it looks like there's a lot of like random one-ofs, which I guess would be fun, just to kind of like have a unique experience, but I don't know, if you kind of want to have a, a consistent strategy, I always, from what I've researched, you kind of want to, you know, build your deck to have more than just one. You want to have like three or four, um, just so you can have better percentages, so that's Blood Grace Paladin. Necropolis Regent Flying. It's kinda cool. So it's a vampire. Is this this is a vampire too? Yeah, vampire knight. So apparently creatures can have different um like I guess tribes is what what is called. Which is uh kind of like they all work together with various synergies. Well, that's kind of cool. Beacon of Immortality. 
So again, um, I, I, these, these are my first magic cards. I have no idea if anything's good. This looks pretty damn good. Uh, destroy all creatures. <laughs> That's like a board wipe. Um, that's kind of like, um, gosh, way back in the day, there was a card in Yu-Gi-Oh! where it did something very similar. It was like Black Hole or something like that, where it would just like wipe out the whole board. So that's really cool art, too. Just everyone getting obliterated, destroy all creatures. So I assume that's kind of good if you're behind in the game. I don't know. Like I said, I don't really, these are my first magic cards, so I don't really know the strategies. Um, this is an enchantment, shielded by faith. So again, I'm not sure if it's a uh, if you can see see the cards very well. So I'll probably put overlays of like the actual cards just off of Google, so you can see the cards better. These are in oh wait, okay, yeah I don't know. I'm gonna shuffle them up anyways, sleep them up and then shuffle. Okay, so this is an artifact. It's kind of cool. Anointed Deacon. Man, look at that. You may have target. Okay. Kind of cool. Vampire Clerics. Bishop of the Bloodstained. Enters the battlefield target. Opponent loses one life for each vampire you control. Wow. But that's five mana cost, right? So, I'm not sure if that's good. I mean, unless you have, like, a crap ton of vampires. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Like I said, never actually played the game, so... It's going to be fun to figure out what's good and what's not over time. But again, I'm going to be very, very casual. Not really looking to be competitive in the game. Just looking for, you know, like I said, a kind of a, a board game replacement... Um, with my friends, so it's not like they know what's good and what's not either, so we're all going to be kind of on a level playing field. But, uh, yeah. Vampire Shaman Outlay. Hmm. Okay. Alright, so this we have two of. So is there a reason why we have two of these? Just plus one plus ones on Vampire. On Bloodhound Vampire. Or Bloodbound Vampire. Blood Bond Vampire. <laughs> That's interesting. So this is a card that can kind of, over time, uh, get out of control, I guess. Starts off with a 3-3 three, three whenever you gain life, so... Hmm, interesting. It's a 4 mana cost, though. This is a kind of interesting card. This is, uh, yeah, gonna be excited to play with this. Okay, Child of Night. Life Link. Damage damage. Hmm. Okay. So it's like kind of early game, I guess. It's two mana, two one. Um. Yeah, I got two of these. So this guy's six mana. Yeah, it's flying. Tap three, untapped vampires you control. Return a deathless ancient from your graveyard to your hand. Huh. I don't know if this is that good. I mean, you can always get it back, but it, it's going to your hand and it costs six mana, so I'm not really sure. It's kind of cool, though. I like that concept that you can constantly get this back. So I can definitely tell this tribe of vampires is really interesting because it has its um, kind of strategies of, you know, life gain and with that card it was, uh, you know, kind of unending life, I guess. It's kind of the theme of this deck. Um, Duskborn, Sky Marcher. Until the end of the turn. Hmm. Whoa, Paladin of the Bloodstained.
Hmm. Interesting. Oh, so we got two of these. Yep. Okay. Queen's Bay Soldier. So this one doesn't really... It's just a standard... Meh. Nothing really special in this one. We got two of those. Yeah, it's just flavor text. Okay. So I'm not really expecting, you know, really strong decks from from um, an out-of-the-box board game. But, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting playing with them. I hope they're all balanced against each other. That's the main thing. I think they are. I think they are. Um, Sky March Blood Letter. Two of those. It's really cool art. I really love the magic art. Uh, it's very... I don't know, it's very grim. Kind of like a... I don't know, it's just really cool fantasy art style, so... Can't be blocked. Vampire Nighthawk. Check that out. Death Touch. Hmm. Vampire Noble. Nothing really special about this one. It's kind of cool art though. She's like, has a little masquerade mask. Hmm. Yeah, so we got two of those. Just a basic vampire 3 2. Alright, so this is a land apparently. I'm not really sure what that diamond is. Gonna have to do some research on that. Tainted field. It's kinda cool. We got four of those. Okay, so these are just your basic lands. Different art styles. Okay, so let's see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine planes. Cool. So we'll continue with the swamps. Swamps. So I think, yeah, it's just the same too. Okay. Here's some spells. Mortify. Wow, look at that. Destroy target creature or enchantment. Three mana. Instant. Okay, nice. We got two of those. That looks fairly useful. Prismatic Lens. Artifact. Another one of those diamond symbols. Add one mana of any color. Hmm. So we got two of these. I'm assuming this is pretty good if you're trying to get um, a particular mana. 
Hmm. Okay. Urge to feed. Wow. Now that is uh, a vampire card for sure. <laughs> Look at that. That's sick. Target creature gets negative three, negative three until end of turn. You may tap any number of untapped vampire creatures you control. If you do, pl put one, pl uh, plus one, plus one counter on each of those vampires. Dang. Hmm. It's only two mana. So you have to have untapped vampires. Hmm. Okay. That's kind of cool. I wonder if that's an overpowered card. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But that's definitely really cool. It's probably my favorite art so far. Veterans Reflexes. Target creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Untap that creature. Okay. Okay, we got two of those. Whoa, Val of Duty. It's an enchantment aura, enchanted creature, enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two. Has vigilance and can't attack you or a planeswalker you control. Interesting. Huh, okay. Persecution until end of turn. Creatures you control get plus one plus one, and creatures your opponents control get minus one minus one. So it's an instance, but it's only until the end of the turn. Cool. Alright, so that's the vampires. Um let's crack open another one. Alright. So it's adaptive automaton. And um, if I'm taking a little bit too long, let's go ahead and uh, you can increase the speed or you can just jump back and forth in the video. I mean, there's just already been a ton of unboxing videos of these, so I'm not doing really anything new. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, chosen type. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Whoa. Wait. Okay, so that's colorless. This is red. Dang, seven mana. Oh, so this is the pirates, I think, right? It says human pirate. Okay, if a source you control would deal damage. Deals double that damage, dang. What? Wow. Double damage? What? Interesting, okay. I guess that's why it costs 7 mana. Wait, uh, am I? Hold on. Okay, so it's like a mix of, okay. That's kinda cool. Fire and water. Or red and blue. So this is pirates. Dang, that's actually really cool. Now, why is this in here, though? So I guess you choose pirates, and then... Yeah, I guess you do choose pirate. Wow. Huh. So I'm really starting to see just kind of like the beginnings of... I guess what decks are trying to do in this game. Flash, flying. Dream color siren can... Block only creatures with flying. Dang, what the heck? That's a pirate? What? <laughs> a siren pirate. 
I'm gonna dream call signs. Da -da. Cool. Blatant thievery. Wow. What? Oh, okay, so that's that's why it costs seven mana. Holy crap! Wow, gain control of target permanent. And that's definitely blame theory. All right, mass mutiny for each opponent. Gain control of up to one target. Okay. Hmm. Dire Fleet Hoarder. When Dire Fleet Hoarder dies, create a colorless treasure artifact token with. Okay, so I don't really know what that does, but sacrifice this artifact, add one mana, da da da. Okay. Creature human pirate. Wait, so this is what? This is uh some black. This needs a swap, right? So wait, hold on. So this is, whoa, cool, look at that, that's a three, this is a uh, swamp, island, and mountains, wow, okay, that's really cool, that's really cool. So this, this deck might not be beginner friendly if there's three mana types, I'm not really sure. But I really like that. That's really interesting. So we got two of these. Whoa, we got three of these. Alright. So, three swamps. Okay. Headstrong Brute. Can't block. Has menace as long as you control another pirate. So we're gonna have to look up what menace is. I feel like the first time we play, it's gonna be a lot of looking up things. So, all right, we got two of those. I'm not sure if that's good or not, but marauding looter. The beginning of your end step. If you attacked with a creature this turn, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. Hmm. So, with card games, drawing cards is obviously really good, but. This one's. This one's kind of balanced, I guess. You draw a card, discard a card, you can discard a useless card, I guess. That's really cool. No, I'm not sure. I guess over time I'll learn what you know the different colors mean. That was really cool. Okay, I'm rigging a runner. First strike, raid. If on uh, uh, if you attack with a creature, okay, so. It's kind of cool. It's like a monkey? Oh, it's a goblin, okay. <laughs> I got two of these. Alright. So more blues. 
Create a colorless treasure artifact token with. Huh. Okay. Two of these. Whoa, this one's kind of interesting. Stormfleet Aerialist. Hmm. So it looks like we're looking at a lot of raid as a keyword. Yeah. Or right. one. Yeah, okay. Two of these. So it looks like these are the early game ones. Yep. Stormfleet Pyromancer. If you attack with a creature this turn, hmm. So this one's you can definitely see where um, pirates are going. They're they're doing a lot of raiding. <laughs> I like that, uh, that art too. That's really cool. Some dude getting torched by a pyromancer. Look at that. Now the thing is, why is this five mana though? Deals two damage to target. Is that worth five mana? Huh. I don't know. I have no idea. Stormfleet Spy, when Stormfleet Spy enters the battlefield, if you attacked with a creature this turn, draw a card. Okay. Alright, two of these. Okay, so here's another swamp. So it seems like there's a lot of treasure with the pirates. Oh wow, hold on. Target opponent creates two. Oh, okay, so this is a four or three, but for two mana, so that's how it balances out. I got two of these. Inter wow, interesting, huh? That's kind of cool. I mean, it's just the concept, I mean, but giving your opponent two treasure artifacts. Okay, interesting, interesting. Crumbling Necropolis. So, Crumbling Necropolis. Mm, enters battlefields. Oh, wait, okay, interesting. So it looks like this one's designed for this deck. That's kind of cool. Huh. Really cool. Got four of those. Okay, so here's our islands. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven islands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven swamps. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight mountains. Now, is this a good distribution of mana? I'm not sure. Because we have... We have eight mountains and seven of the other ones, right? But we only have a few. Uh, I don't know. We'll we'll theory craft a little bit later. But someone much smarter than me has already done the balancing, so <laughs> we'll just hope that you know it's good, good distributions. But um, coat with venom. That's kind of cool. Look at that. Nice little dinosaur. Huh. So target creature gets plus one, plus two, and gains death touch until end of turn. Okay, that's really nice. Because any amount of damage, 
kills a creature. Okay. Alright, so we only got one of those. Doom Blade, wow. What the heck's going on in here? Just like, I don't know, just... What, what is going on? It's like someone slicing with the Doom Blade, I guess? I don't know. This is destroy target non-black creature. So you can definitely see how that's useful. Fiery Cannonade. Deals two damage to each non pirate creature. Wow. So I wonder... Yeah, it looks like you can probably have friendly fire with this, so obviously you want to have all pirates for your creatures. Hmm, really cool. I should probably put it over here. Alright, innocent blood. Each player sacrifices a creature. Whoa. Interesting. strike. So three damage. Just looks like a pretty basic um, direct damage spell. Kind of cool. All right, here we go. Another prismatic lens. So this is the first card that I think. So this is also the other deck and the vampire deck. Cool. I can definitely see how this is useful. Especially if you're running multiple, um, multiple, uh, colors. Rush of Adrenaline, target creature gets plus two, plus one. And Trample, okay. Gotta look up that keyboard. Until I determine. Got two of these. That was really awesome. It's only one, one mana, but you get plus two, plus one. Our last card is a Vow of Lightning. Whoa. Enchanted creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and has first strike, and you and can't attack you or play into walker you control. I wonder what that means. I, I guess this is like if you want to use it on your opponents, they can't attack you, but they still get the plus two, plus two. I don't know. I don't know why it's... I don't know what's the point of can't attack you or Planeswalker. Maybe it's just to give you flexibility, because obviously from a beginner's perspective, you want to enchant your own creature, right? So, yeah. I'll figure it out later. Really cool. Let's crack on the next one. Okay. So this is... Um, the Merfolk. Really interesting. Kind of like a fantasy, I guess, elvish type, or maybe some kind of elemental or something. I have no idea. We'll see. Alright. So, this is the Merfolk deck. Gains plus one plus one. Creature can't be blocked. Hmm. Okay. It's really cool. I don't know what what is she? Is she? She's just a merc folk, I guess. <laughs> really cool. All right. Whoa! Look at this. Soul of the Harvest. So this is an elemental, kind of like a Trent kind of guy. Trample. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. Whoa. So this is six mana, but it says six, six on stats. Okay. Pretty cool. So it looks like we're looking at blue and green as our types, or as our 
mana, yeah, I guess what the theme of the deck. Waker of the Wilds. Whoa. Now this one's a little bit more complex. Put X plus one. That land becomes a zero zero. It's still a land. What in the what? So you can turn lands into cre what? So put X plus one plus one. And it has X cost, right? Okay, so. Wow, interesting. So this guy turns lands into elemental creatures with haste. Wow, okay. It's still a land, though. Wow, that, one, that one's definitely an oddity. That's kind of cool, though. Waker of the Wild. Wow. Okay. I'm gonna have to look that one up and how to play that because that one seems kind of complex. Alright, Aether Gale. Return six target non land permanents to their owner's hand. Wow. Interesting. Hmm. So I'm trying to think. That could also be helpful, I guess. If you need to bring something back into your hand. And obviously it's a tempo play if you're using it on your opponent. Okay. Yeah. Six target non-land. Permanence. Okay. Okay, yeah. Threads of Disloyalty. Chain creature with converted mana cost two or less. You control enchanted creature. What? Dang, that's like a little mini mic control. Hmm. That's really interesting. You control enchanted creature. Oh. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the art, that's kind of cool. He's like a, I don't know, like a sage kind of thing? Like a lizard, or what? I don't know. Really interesting. Okay, time warp, whoa. What in the world? That is really cool. It's like pausing a tsunami or something? I don't know. Yeah, our target player takes an extra turn after this. What? What? Hold on. What? Target player takes an extra turn? First of all, hold on. So you can... Obviously you want to use this for yourself, right? Target player... Extra turn. What? What? Alright, that's, that's pretty insane. An extra turn? Wow. That, that That's definitely a strong card, if I'm not mistaken, right? I mean, anytime you, in any game you want an extra turn. Okay. Really cool. Era Elemental. Nice. So this is definitely kind of an elemental, like, druidish kind of deck. So, this one is fairly straightforward. Five mana cost, flying, four, four. I really love that art. I'm not really sure... It's like a tornado kind of being. Really cool. We got two of them. Okay, Deep Root Warrior. I'm really loving the colors on these. These are really cool. It gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Interesting, okay. So, that's an early game card. Got two of those. Jungle Barrier. Wait, it's a creature. But it's a... It's a plant wall. 
Whoa, okay. So this is Defender. When Jungle Bear enters the battlefield, draw a card. Wow. That's two, six in stats. It's four mana. Huh, interesting. So we got two of these, but I'm to look up the keyword defender, see what that's all about. Okay. Kumena's speaker. Creature Merfolk Shaman. Kumena's speaker gets plus one plus one as long as you control another Merfolk or an island. So I'm assuming that's Constance thing. Okay. I mean, one mana cost for 2-2. Two, two. I mean, that's pretty good, I guess. That's good value. Hmm, okay. Really cool. River Sneak. River Sneak can be blocked. Whenever another Marvel enters the battlefield under your control, River Sneak gets plus two plus two until under turn. Okay. I don't think this is that good, but you never know. You never know. So we only got one of those. Shaper Apprentice. Has a fly as long as you control another Merfolk. So this one's all about having control of Merfolks on the field, it looks like. You always want to have at least one Merfolk. Hmm, okay. Again, this doesn't look that powerful. Merfolk Wizard. Hmm. Whoa. Shapers of Nature. Put plus one, plus one counter on target creature. So I'm assuming this is right here is just like um, kind of the cost, right? It takes four mana, but one of them has to be a nature, or a green mana, or I don't know, whatever it's called. Um, wow, remove a plus one from a creature control, draw a card. This is interesting. This is, this is a very, I don't know. There's a lot of depth, in my opinion, right? Because it doesn't say it needs to be a counter from this, so what if you have a counter from something else? I mean, obviously you can draw a card. But it does take three mana, so... Very interesting. Very interesting. I really like the art, too. It's really cool. Oh, we got two of them. Hmm, okay. Really cool. Tempest Caller. Whoa. Hmm, okay. Dang. I think this is good. I'm not sure though. We'll find out over time. <laughs> Alright, Vine Shaper Mystic. So you have up to two. Hmm, okay. So, yeah, obviously with the Merfolk deck, you want to make sure you're always having Merfolks on the field. Oh, we got two of these. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. This one's a lot more straightforward uh, as far as strategy, I think, right? It's all about the merfolks. Water Trap Weaver. Dang. This one's good, right? Because they can't untap it during its controller's next untap step. Hmm. I 
can see that being useful if I'm thinking of it correctly alright so this is kinda like the we should have, oh we only have two of these, whoa so I wonder why we have only two of these add one mana pool of any well okay we only got two of those one, two, three. I really like the art, by the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve islands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve forests. Nice even 50 50 split. So concentrate, draw three cards, that's what I'm talking about. But it does take four mana, so. Dang, draw three cards, that's really good. Giant growth, target creatures get plus three plus three until end of turn. Dang, what? For one? Wow. That's really good, right? I don't know, from a beginner player's perspective, that looks really freaking good. Dang, that art is sick. Look at that. Wow. That's really cool. This is probably my favorite one so far in this deck. Giant growth. That's really cool. Huh. Okay. Whoa. Ooh, dinosaurs getting stabbed in the face. Look at that. Or the, in the mouth. <laughs> Prey upon. Target creature you control fights. Target creature you don't control. What? Hold on. Okay. I'm not sure. Huh. Okay. We have two of them, so... Alright. Okay. Interesting. I'm sure you can find some use in that. Prismatic lenses again. So it looks like this is, since all of these decks so far have been multicolored, I can definitely see how this is a useful card. What is, is that like a mirror or what? Well, obviously it's a lens. <laughs> Cool. So I got two of those. Rancor, whoa. That's really cool art. So this is enchantment, aura, enchanted creature gets plus two, plus zero, and that's trample. And Rancor is put into a graveyard from the battlefield to return Rancor to its owner's hand. Wow. Hmm. That's kind of cool. We got two of them. Unsummon. Return to our creature to its owner's hand. Really nice. So it seems like a nice tempo play. Got two of them. And the last card, Val of Flight. That's a really cool artwork. Oh, okay. Enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus two plus two, has flying in attack you or a planeswalker you control. Cool. Really cool. So it seems like all of these cards kinda have that that last card as the enchantment. Interesting. Alright, let's open our last one. Okay. So here's our last deck. I think this is the dinosaurs, if I remember. Alright. 
So this is definitely a really, really cool garden. Burning Sun's avatar. Dinosaur avatar. When Burning Sun's avatar enters the battlefield, it deals 3 damage to target opponent, and 3 damage to up to 1 target creature. Dang. But it does cost 6 mana. Wow, okay. Nice. Some more dinosaurs, look at that. Okay. Other dinosaurs you control have haste. When Registrar Alpha enters the battlefield, create a 3-3 green dinosaur creature token with trample. Really cool. It's only 5 mana. Alright. <laughs> Aggravated Assault. Okay. So this is untap all creatures you control. After this main phase, an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. Whoa, what? Activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. Alright, that is definitely not a beginner friendly card. <laughs> Gotta figure that one out over time. Okay, Disaster Radius. Seven mana, so this is something that must do a lot as an additional cost to cast Disaster Radius. Reveal a creature card from your hand. What? Okay, Disaster Radius deals X damage to each creature your opponent controls, where X is the revealed card's converted mana cost. Whoa. Alright, so you definitely want to definitely want to use a big creature for that. Okay. So Hunter's Prowess until end of your turn or end of turn, target creature gets plus three plus three and gains trample. And whenever this creature deals damage combat damage to a player, draw that many cards. Dang. Wow. But it is five mana, so... Wow, that's really cool. Whoa, Quicksilver Amulet. Yeah, that's really cool. Look at that. Man, that's really intricate. Okay, so you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. What? Hold on. That seems really good, but at the same time, it does seem like it's a lot of mana, so... I don't know. Seems good, but, you know, gotta play with it first. <laughs> Ancient Brontodon. Holy crap! What? 9-9 nine, nine in stats. But it is a mana. Wow. Really cool. This is kind of an interesting card art. It's like two different shades of a dinosaur. Interesting. It's kind of cool. Bellowing Aegisaur? Wow, six mana. In range, whenever Bellowing Aegisaur is dealt damage, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each other creature you control. Okay, cool. Okay. Oh, but that one's, this one's a white. So is this another three card? Or three, three mana deck? Yeah, look at that. Wow. Interesting, okay. Cool. So this game definitely doesn't... Um, I guess it kind of assumes that you've played 
before because it's not like mono decks which are like all the same color so interesting interesting okay borderland ranger when borderland ranger enters the battlefield you may search your library for a basic land card reveal it put it into your hand then shuffle your library okay that's a lot going on let me, let me reread that Okay, that's... never mind, that's not a lot going on, that's relatively simple. It's a nice little fishing card, pretty nice. A little early game card. Kinda cool. Okay. Oh, Charging Mantrasar. Trample Haste. Wow. Really cool. Look at that. 5 mana, 5-5. Five, five. Poor guy's about to get eaten. Look at that. <laughs> That's really cool. Alright. Let's keep on going. Trover of the Mighty. Trover of the Mighty gets plus to plus two as long as you control a dinosaur. Hmm. You can tap it, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. See, I really like cards like this because it can be used. Um, I don't know, I guess in the beginning you would want to play this so you can add one mana of any color to your mana pool and then maybe if you draw it later and you control a dinosaur it becomes a decent, you know, 3-3 three, three in stats for two mana. So, I don't know. It's probably not like really strong but it seems like it's practical. Okay. Whoa. When the world he's like on a he's like on another dinosaur. <laughs> That's nice. That's really cool. Alright, frenzied raptor. Oh, so he's not just flavor text. Okay. Whoa, Imperial Aerosaur. Flying when Imperial Aerosaur enters the battlefield, another target creature you control gets plus one plus one and gains flying until end of turn. Whoa. Okay. Got two of them. Interesting. It's kinda cool. Nest robber. Haste. So we get two of these. Whoa, what is this? Raging a sword of tooth. Whoa. A lot going on in this one. This is a final boss if I've seen one. <laughs> Look at this. It's crazy. Okay, trample. When a raging sword tooth enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to each other creature. I'm also going to assume it's probably friendly creatures too. Hmm. Really cool. Really, really cool. Raptor Companions. Got two of them. It's a basic card. Nothing crazy. Pet raptor or something like that. He's like on a leash. Ah, poor guy. Okay. Raptor hatchling. Enrage. Whenever raptor hatchling is dealt damage, create a 3 3 green dinosaur creature token with trample. Okay. So it only has one health. Okay, interesting. Ravenous Dagger Tooth. Uh, whenever it's dealt damage, you gain two life. Thundering Spineback. Whoa, seven mana. 
other dinosaurs you control get plus one plus one you can spend six mana create a three three dinosaur creature token with trample dang huh okay that seems pretty good all right so so this is like the special lands where you can choose it's interesting I think what was that one deck I think it was the merfolk if I'm not mistaken that only had two like of their special lands um, interesting so we got four of these well that's kind of a cool plan so let's keep on going with the planes really like an art here four five six so six planes three four five six seven seven mountains one two three four five six seven eight nine forests Let's check out some of these. Dinosaur Stampede. Instant attacking creature. Attacking creatures get plus two and plus zero until end of turn. Dinosaurs you control gain trample until end of turn. Nice. Seems like a pretty good offensive spell. Lightning Helix. Oh. Lightning Helix deals 3 damage to target creature or player, and you gain 3 life. Nice, okay. So that's kind of like, um... Kind of like Lightning Strike, right? Except this one you also get life back. Path to Exile. Exile, target creature, its controller may search his or her library for a basic land card. Put that card onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle his or her library. Hmm, okay. That seems kind of strong. So... Exile target creature. Da, da, da. Well, I mean, you kind of help them out, but I mean, if there's a big threat, it's only one mana, too. Alright, prey upon. Oh, hey! So this card again, right? We've seen this one. Target creature you control, fights target creature you don't control. I think that was the Merfolk that had this one. Okay, interesting. And then of course prismatic lenses. Savage Stomp. Savage Stomp costs two less to cast if it targets a dinosaur you control. Put a plus one plus one on target creature you control, then that creature fights target creature you don't control. So, wow. So it's kind of like uh, Prey Upon. Alright, yeah. Interesting, okay. Sheltering Light. Target creature gains indestructible until end of turn. Scry 1. Damage and effects that say destroy don't destroy the creature. Okay, so we got two of these. 
seems like a defensive spell to um, you know just general defensive spell seems like it'd be applicable to a lot of things I wonder why is this scry one though there must be maybe a scry two I don't know like I said I'm a beginner so we'll figure it out later all right vow of wildness Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus three, plus three. It has trample and can't attack you or plans or be control. Really nice. Plus three, plus three. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for the dinosaur deck. Okay. So now we're getting into the tokens. Just to take a look. So I guess these are from the, um, just tokens from the other cards. I'm not sure how to go about it. Vampire, token vampire, life link. There's a backside, treasure, token artifact. Dinosaur. Oh yes, that one. I remember reading about the dinosaur 3 3. Treasure. So, wow. Holy crap. That's a lot of dinosaurs. What? What? <laughs> okay, about to say. Saprolink. Wow. Okay. Okay, so I wasn't going crazy. There are some with different arts on the treasures. It's kind of cool. All right. And so those are the tokens and treasures. Let's check out some of the board pieces. Alright, so with all the unwrapping, here is kind of just a basic deck holder box. Even though it is kind of just like cardboard, it's kind of cool. Legion of Dusk. Brazen Coalition. Pirates. And the Sun Empire. Dinosaurs. I feel like this one's going to be really popular amongst our group. Uh, for me, I don't know. I would have to say maybe the vampires were kind of interesting. Of course dinosaurs are cool, but... This definitely is the most unique. Um, the merfolk. I don't know. I kind of... I, I like the merfolk. They're kind of cool. And then pirates are pirates. So... Yeah, can't wait to play with them. With each of the decks. Whoops. Oh. It's gonna organize this. I'm running out of real estate over here. So this is just the box art again. Explorers of Ixalan. Oh, there we go. Deck list for each of them. Wow, that's really nice. It's really convenient. 
So these are more or less balanced, it looks like. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty much all more or less balanced. Cool. All right, so those are the deck lists. And this is just the instructions. Free-for-all game, two-player games, discovering the map. I'll definitely go into more detail when I actually play with my friends on this. Map tiles, events, quests, sites. Winning the game. Really, really cool. Uh, but it is still kind of frustrating that there's no instructions to play a regular game of magic, but what can you do? Oh yeah, there's no dice, which I don't think it's necessary to have dice, but it's still kind of nice for um, keeping track of life. And here are all the tiles. The Golden City. This is the OP card, right? When you reveal this tire, tile or take this from another player, draw two cards. At the beginning of your upkeep, draw two cards and deal three damage to each opponent. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that is insane. That's, that's going to make you a target for sure. Okay. So just read some of these. These are kind of cool. Spices up the game a little bit. All right. They say the Raptors. <laughs> really cool. You can definitely see each of these just adding a little bit to the to the game. It's always good to have uh, some randomness to a free-for-all game just to spice it up. Sheet will
Okay. So, that's it. That's the end of it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it's a long one, my first one, but I'm really excited to play. Can't wait to start uh, collecting magic. So, thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy.